Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson. Was that so hard? Welcome to Chatbox, everybody. I'm David Cruz. The confirmation hearings for Justice Jackson, which, yes, does sound like a superhero, gave New Jersey Senator Cory Booker several opportunities to provide context and, of course, drama. You did not get there because of some left-wing agenda? You didn't get here because of some dark money groups? You got here how every black woman in America who's gotten anywhere has done by being <laughs> like Ginger Rogers said. I did everything Fred Astaire did, but backwards in heels. <laughs> and, and so I, I'm just sitting here saying nobody's stealing my joy. Nobody's going to make me angry. Senator, it's good to see you again. That was one of several viral moments between you and Justice Jackson. You said you saw your mom in Justice Jackson. Well, I think I, I saw that for a couple of reasons. One is I sat at a kitchen table and listened to a lot of my mom's stories where she was uh, questioned, even though she was qualified or overqualified, where she was disrespected. Um, and, and I think a lot of women, period, and, and black women in particular have had that feeling. And I watched this uh, Supreme Court healing, hearing that for me was a moment of joy and excitement, but I also watched uh, some of that same disrespect that's familiar to so many people. But the second thing is, look, I can't tell you how moving this is to me to see her sit there, this immensely qualified human being, um, uh, be on the precipice of breaking a tradition that you know, 115 Supreme Court judges, 108 have been white men, and we're finally seeing our first African-American woman. So there's been a lot of emotions this week uh, for me personally, but I think for a lot of Americans that they're watching and witnessing this historic moment. Yeah, you listen to some of the rhetoric from those opposed to the nomination, and it was almost like a parody of carefully chosen rhetoric of intolerance and, and even disdain. Has there been any progress? You know, there, there are a lot of Republican colleagues of mine that were well within the zone of tough questioning, but not disrespectful. But there were a number that literally, you know, Saturday Night Live and others didn't have to rewrite their words. They just quoted them of some of the absurdity of what she had to endure. And so this is yet another example of a lot of our, I, I, the fabric of our of our country being worn uh, and, and unnecessarily so. We can strongly disagree with each other, but still recognize human dignity. You still recognize that we need each other. And you know this, if there's any mission I feel uh, as, as, as steep as that hill is to climb, as I wanna see our country begin to heal again and not have such contempt and disrespect for each other. Uh, I think we really need that. And, and one a great sign of that uh, uh, is the fact that the, the institution of the Supreme Court itself is losing legitimacy in the eyes of the American public. More people today than I think ever recorded are seeing it as a partisan body um, that is not about what it should be, which is an independent branch of government that's focused on the law. And I think from the Merrick Garland controversy all the way to this hearing, a lot of people are losing faith that this is an institution that's above politics and focused on the law.